Okay, <clears throat> here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are recording. We are now live from the inside studios, so the hum's a little bit different. And I am using a different mic setup because the trusty Zoom is actually being used currently to do some transfers to digital of a uh, selection of the tape selection, the cassette selection. What am I looking at? What are you looking at? Okay. You may or may not know, of course you should know, that I got back into the cassette culture and I've been making these, making the rounds, making some scores, buying tapes in bulk, not really looking at them, not picking through them, just grabbing what I can. It says a lot about a person and it says a lot about different things and it's very interesting to pull through collections. Now, what you are seeing here in all its glory is a simplified version of a low resolution picture that I've been staring at on Craigslist for a long time. Box of tapes, 20 bucks, 80 to 100 tapes, and that's the picture I got. Only oh, it was more of a lower, lower resolution, so I could kind of pick out dice, thought running scared, the warriors, that's what I kind of got out of this. I didn't really, couldn't really tell what else was going on here, but I was like, you know what, I'm intrigued. I'm like, hmm, that box looks pretty deep. There's a dozen or so on top, plus the side. If that goes down properly, $20, perfect. All right, now here's the thing though, it's in this f kind of far away place for me. Um, it's kind of a long drive and I kept looking at it, I'm going, it's just, it's worth it, but it's not worth it. It's worth it, but it's not worth it. And I, uh, Back and forth, back and forth, and I'm looking at this, and I'm going, this is this is gonna be a good haul. It's gonna be a good haul. So finally, I called the guy, and he's like, we didn't hook up a couple weeks ago. I've been staring at this, staring at this thing, and there's another guy around here that's buying tapes because I've been looking at things, and then they've gone away, and so I gotta be careful um, because there's other people on the prowl. I don't think we're looking for the same things, but there's a big overlap, and it'll work out, but there's still whatever. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, okay. So finally, I managed to get down there today because um, it's school vacation and I have the house to myself, so I worked. And then I, instead of going straight home, I ran this errand and I shaved a little bit of time off of it because it's on the way from work, so it was farther, but it still took me forever, ever to get home. Now I had, a, when I got home, now I'm late coming home, nobody's home, I have to do all the chores for home, plus I had to take care of a bunch of other things. I forgot to eat, I had to make dinner for myself, I had to do just all the regular stuff, put away a bunch of groceries and, and supplies, uh, take care of business here, there, and everywhere. Finally, it's so late. Now I have not looked in this box, I don't know what else is in this box, and that's kind of, I've been killing me. It's a little bit like Christmas time because the first thing I didn't want to do is just pick this thing up and kind of start tearing through it because I know there's going to be some cool stuff in here. But I have not and I did not yet because I wanted to capture the moment actually live uh, because I think it's kind of cool. Now, I'll say this. I finally drove down there. I finally drove down there and I, and, and I met the guy and the guy met me right at the, off the, the exit of the highway. And so we made the pass off and he goes, and it was perfect timing. He goes, all right, call me when you pass such and such exit and, and I'll meet you at the gas station across the way from the exit we're meeting at. And I did and he goes, okay, I'll see you. And as I was pulling off, he goes, I'll be in such and such a car. As we're pulling off, he there he was, pulling in the gas station as I was pulling in the gas station. It was perfect timing. Hey, you're the guy with the tapes? Yeah. He goes, hey, by the way, uh, I found this. You can have this today. I found this today, too. Well, first of all, thank you. I'll take this case that's, you know, 100 pack. Uh, let's see, I got this work. An auxiliary setting here, and I don't have any good stuff. Um, so I did open this, but when I did open it the first time, I squealed like a schoolgirl. Look at this, look what I got. Look at this. This is why you go off the beaten path. This is why you talk to people on the phone. This is why I like this stuff. Ho, 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 ho. Okay, first of all, over here, I know you can't see this. Let's see if I can do it. 
do, 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 do. It is let's see, a whole box of Christmas tapes. Christmas tapes. Now I already have a box of Christmas tapes started, so I'm just gonna have to expand my Christmas tape section. But not only that, we got some Christmas songs. Look, Lee Green was Christmas, 20 Christmas favorites, Mickey Kid, The Carpenter's Christmas Portrait. This is like the third or fourth copy I have of this. This is incredible. Then it makes the round. Oh, look, here's another Carpenter's Christmas. This is the old fashioned Christmas. Anne Murray Christmas Wishes. This was my one of my favorites when I was a kid. I don't know why. I think it's because my mom had it and she liked it. Um, Anyway, that's cool, but no, here, look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. One, two, three. Max L, you are th 60. Uh, unopened, new old stock from, I don't know when this is from, the uh, assembled in Mexico. Maxwell full warranty, defective cup manufacturer. It does not say when it was manufactured, but it was assembled in Mexico. So whenever they were doing that, uh, here's another one that looks brand new, but was open. And here's a UR90 unopened. This one is also made in Mexico. So when did they do that? I don't know. What else do we have in here? Uh, nine, this is a data cassette. I don't know what's different about it, but it does have different markings up here. I wonder if this would work in a DCC or this is, uh, I don't know what this is, program SMH tape. Looks kind of like a tape, but there's a big notch here. There's a different right protect. This is a little bit different. I think these the holes are different here a little bit. No, the holes are the same. So this is just a data tape. Feels a little bit heavier. So I did squeal like a schoolgirl when I opened this up and I saw these unopened Maxells. Now I have some recycled, some gently recycled XL2s that I have for when, for recording. Oh, look at this guy too, by the way. That's an XL2S. This is super silent, phase accuracy, cassette mechanism, extended dynamic range, excellent noise. This is opened. It does say side one on it. I wonder what's on it or if there's anything on side one or side two. A lot of times these things get recorded once, played once, that's so heavy. Whatever it is, the plastic or the tape, the quality of the tape, I don't, it, this is a heavy tape. These were 350 a piece in the 90s. There's also some Rite Aid blanks, some cheap blanks, some type zeros as the some people would say this looks like a very old GE cassette. You can tell they're old because there's actually a uh, hex. It's a, it's a that's a Phillips head on that side with a hex a hex bolt. Look at that! Look at that! Isn't that crazy? So these are from the late 80s, early 90s, into the 90s, maybe into the late 90s. I don't know. And this is definitely some older stuff. Christmas favorites, of course. This is awesome. So right up there alone, now this is what the guy threw in extra because I bought his tapes. He's like, here, I have these too. Unbelievable. So I'm just I'm thrilled at being able to find these. Come on, close. And this is also a nice case that I'm very excited about. So this is what I got in here for now. What do we got here? Streets of Fire music from the original motion picture soundtrack. This is the beautiful Blue Danube. Running Scared soundtrack featuring Michael McDonald. Uh, Post Doobies. The Spike Jones, best of Spike Jones. Here's a classical, the Warrior soundtrack. This is what I bought it on, on this. The Soul Years, Atlantic Records. Teachers, what is this? Teachers. Aaron Russo production. Let's see what we got. The platters. Red Fox. Let's start pulling some of this out here. Red Fox. So boy, Red Fox. Yeah. Check that out. Oh, we're in there's some interesting stuff. By the way, if the cases are broasted, I don't care because I got plenty of them. Oh, what do we got here? Great American Rock and Roll Revival. 30 sides by the original artist. What is this stuff? The Day the Laughter Died Dice. Oh, it looks like we got some comedy in here. The Heat Seekers on ACDC, Billy Joel, I go to extremes. Oh, there's some singles in here. 
behind the wheel, the pesh mode. I want to see if I can turn the camera here so this is more of a natural dig while I'm pulling out here. Okay. Okay. What else we got going on? Let's see. Well, here's that Spike Jones. All right, so we got some classical stuff. Rachmaninoff. Birds. I actually have another copy of this. So this is Rachmaninoff. Gamma Bernstein, it's Bernstein the film harmonic doing stuff. Maybe I have another Bernstein does uh, the Philharmonic. Maybe, I don't know. Um, George Benson, give me the night. Here's some more classical. Oh yeah, see, yeah, there must be a whole um, series of these. Here's him doing the Blue Danube Walls. Oh, this is great. There's the Running Scared soundtrack. Soul Years. Randy Travis, whoa, we got a little high lonesome in here. How about that, yeah. I'm looking so forward to listening to all these. Music from the original soundtrack teacher, Sam Kinison. Okay, that's interesting. This is um, a modern tape. This is When is this from? Live from Hell? How late did this go? When did Sam produce this? How did he die? 1993. So that's a modern cassette. <laughs> I was in high school when I was on. Oklahoma soundtrack. This is cool. I love doing this. Now, as you saw in the other video, I'm going to have to check all these for pads later. Just look at all this. Oh, there's a Kenny G. We can use him later. I'm sure. That Enya? Alright, hands up. Who fucked the Enya? Okay, hands up. Who beat off the Enya? It's not a family show, kids. Herb Alpert, Tijuana Brass. I got a whole bunch of Herb Alpert. Herb Alpert is awesome. Did you know he's responsible for one of the most uh, iconic breakbeat uh, samples? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't either, but there he is. Check out uh, the album from the 90s. I don't know. Some more Warriors. Whoa, Richard Pryor, the Wizard of Comedy. This is sealed. And on open, that's kind of cool. I will open that eventually. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Kim Wilde. Oh, this is pay dirt, guys. This is the the best of Spanky and our gang. That is, what is that? That is not. Ugh. Huh. I have no idea what that is. Oh, Rhino Records. We're going to have to find out about that. It's some probably old thing. It's a 1986 here. Re-release. Wow. Jackie Mason? The World According to Me. Jackie Mason. Wow. Anybody remember him? Hmm. Oh, it's this stack over here. 60 Greatest Hits of Dion and the Belmonts. There's another Red Fox. Oh, another Richard Marks. Ugh. I saw him in concert when I was... 12 or something. It was not very good. The Righteous Brothers. Kim Wilde? Kim Wilde. Why do that name sound familiar recently? Let's see what she got. Kids in America. Where are the kids in America? Um, she just came up on something else recently. Maybe I had another tape. Holy crap. Let me tell you something. That's a good pull right there. This guy, this guy has good taste. Kitaro, The Silk Road. All right, do yourself a favor. Go look up the Silk Road. It's a it's a documentary that was made in the '80s by a joint venture between uh, the Japanese, the Chinese, and I think an American team, maybe some Europeans. And it was a, a film crew that retraced the Silk Road. It was a ten-part series, and this guy Kitaro did this crazy. It's very Pam Flutey, Zamfurish kind of music, very floaty, ethereal. It's really good, and the whole series is really good. It's like a 10-part series. It's like back when they used to do those travel episodes where it's, you know, 10 hours to get from here to there or whatever. Uh, it, wow, I, I'm so excited about this. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you. We're only, we're only two layers deep here. Glenn Miller Memorial, wow. The 2,000-year-old man in the year 2000, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner, oh boy. <laughs> this is, uh, it's 2020, so this is 20 years after when it was. This is a Rhino release. When was, what is this? 1997 on the, on, on the tape, but I think this is a very, very, well, this is, you know, goes back 
When was the original of this? I'm curious. 1973. Uh, so they went 25 years in the past to think about 25 years in the future. Let's think about what they thought about now 20 years past that. Whoa, are we time traveling yet? Here's another copy of Mean Streets, but that's okay. Wow, we're only on layer two here. Here's the Verb. Buster Poindexter? Is he real? I, I just can't wait to, this is ridiculous. The best of the 70s, 100 great classics. I actually have this playing right now. Um, so that's, that's a classic. Jay and the Americans. These guys were very, very underrated and they don't pass through, but they were pretty good. I'm gonna about, I'm gonna about stop here. Hiroshima go. Oh, look at this, Foxworthy. All right. Rodney Dangerfield, the loser. All right, I'm stopping there. I can't believe, just in two layers, the amount of quality stuff I just pulled out of this. This is why you talk to people on the phone. This is why you drive long ways. And this is why you go with your gut because I've been staring at this and I've been going, this is, this is for me. Judy Tenuta. What is going on? Oh my goodness. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hey, shout out. I got two copies of this now. Um, this is incredible. So, I guess I better not buy any more tapes for a while. I guess I better sell some of these. Going to a flea market soon. It's going to be fun. What do you think? I think I did okay. I think this is gonna be interesting. And I think about this, now look at what I got here. For 20 bucks. That's two months of Spotify. Now realistically, how much music can I listen to in two months? I mean, if I really try hard, I can get through some of this, but holy crap. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. This is the first dig through. I can't wait to see, I'll be uh, posting some more other interesting things coming out of this box and the other ones I've been putting away taped on the side that look weird or old so we'll be checking those out soon and I'm gonna go through some of this I gotta listen to some of this right now so I am going to sign off